Okay, everyone. Everyone, right. Before we start, myself and Pastor Daniel were talking about giving you all memory verses, but not all the same. So, before we start, I'm going to give you all a memory verse, but in a different way. I'd like Pastor Jane, if you can pass these yes. out. Yes! Pass them out, oh. one to each one. Give it a colour for everyone. So, close your eyes <laughs> and mix up, and mix up, and a mix up. Ready? Steady? Go! Give on. Give one to the adults as well. The adults take one as well. Come on, let's see how quick we can do this. Recording Okay, at the end of the lesson, I'm going to ask you to recite your first. So now we quickly recite three times on each of yours. Okay, you quickly look at your verse and then read just like mine says Hebrew 11 verse 11 what? Yeah, and not faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Second time, third time, come and recite, recite. You don't be worried, this is not, a, not something jury, it's not, just recite it now. Hebrew 11. Judge one. not according to their parents, but must judge righteousness of saints, not saints. Because the end of a lesson, you have a song, a, a word, yeah? Something special, okay? Okay, thank you. Three times, the third time, the third time, yeah? John, John. Now face is the sense of saints. The happiness of saints. Okay, everybody, the start, the start. Today I'm going to talk about frog. 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 What do we think frog means? Fully. Fully. What's F? Full. Fully. Fully. Rely. In God. On God. On God. On God. On God. On God. And I have a special t shirt to remind me. Yes. Okay. Fully rely on God. Or trust God. That is what we're going to talk about today. The younger ones in a minute are going to go downstairs to do their own activities. 
Okay, they got some special things to do. And Pete, if you don't mind sharing about what it is like yeah. to have to trust in God. Yeah. But before that, they have their own video, so it will be quiet to watch. Go back one, go back one. Spiderman! That's it. Hey guys, it's me, Douglas. Yeah, I'm here at a big indoor playground called the Play Place. It is awesome. Yeah, they, they've got slides and they've got tunnels and they've got monkey bars and rock walls and, and foam pits and, and there's a big pot that looks like a castle. Yeah, it's so, it's so cool. My parents brought me and my brother here. Um, actually, I'm hiding from my brother Stephen right now. We're playing playground hide and seek. This place is so cute though, I bet he never finds me. Here's the thing though, is I'm having an awesome time, but you should have seen me earlier. I, I was not having a good day. Uh, you see, a, a little while ago I saw this commercial on, on TV uh, for this new indoor playground in town called The Fun Palace. <laughs> Even now, it really feels like they called it The Fun Palace. Well anyways, when, when I saw the commercial I was like, mm, I must go to The Fun Palace. And for like a week, all I could think about was how bad I wanted to go to this quote-unquote fun house. And then, a little while later, we were having dinner, and my dad said we were going to do something fun as a family on Sunday after church. And, and immediately, I jumped up in my seat and I yelled, Are we going to the fun palace? And my whole family just, they looked at me standing up at, at the dinner table, and they were like, Whoa, that was, calm down. And my, my dad told me to sit back down in my chair, and he said, No, I, I don't think... I know you think about a fun palace. Th this place is a surprise, but I think you'll like it a lot. I could feel my little heart break like a potato chip getting hit by a semi-truck. And, and as I felt the, all the pieces of my dream now vaporized by some dumb old surprise, fall to the floor in a clump of despair and disappointment, I threw a temper tantrum like you have never seen. At first, I, I calmly asked, um, so, no fun palace? My dad said no. To which I said, <laughs> I wish when I was swiftly sent up to my room with no dessert. Well, it turns out they didn't ground me from the surprise, which which was a surprise all its own. <laughs> I was sure I was going to get grounded for that. Well, anyways, we were on our way to the big surprise after church that next Sunday, and I wasn't screaming this time, but I was still in a really bad mood. That whole weekend I was in a bad mood. Just mad as anything that we won't go into that fun palace. But then we pulled into the parking lot of this new looking building with a big old sign in front that read, The Play Place. I'm looking around I'm like, hmm, that sign looks kind of familiar. And we get out of the car and we go inside and I just freeze in the door. This was the fun palace. It was exactly the same. I, I must have gotten uh, confused while watching the commercial or something. I, I have no idea how I confused play place with fun palace, but I did. And, and this place was even better than the commercial. You know, sometimes we've got this idea of what we want our life to be like. We've got this plan about how everything is going to go. And if things don't go according to plan, we go bananas. But do you know where we would be right now if we went to the fun palace? If we followed my plan? Yeah, me neither. I have no idea where we'd be. Because, you know, as far as I know, there is no place called the fun palace. Certainly nowhere around here. But my parents' plan... Now that was a good plan. And if I would have just trusted my parents, I wouldn't have lost a whole weekend to just moping around the house feeling sorry for myself that I didn't get to go to the fun palace. You know who else has a plan for you? God. God's got an awesome plan for you. But here is, uh, here's some truth that might be hard to hear. God's plan for you may not be easy. In fact, it might be downright hard. But do you want to know the good news? 
the good news is that we can trust God no matter what. God's plan for you is that even if bad things happen, they'll all turn around for your good. And I certainly don't know how he does it. You know, it's, it's different for everyone. But the Bible says that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. No matter what bad thing happens, God can use it to bless those who trust in him. And if we spend our whole life just being mad about things not going according to our own plan, then we're not going to have a very happy life. And you know what? Sometimes the things we get upset about aren't even a big deal. But, but no matter what happens, we should trust that God has got everything under control. Oh, oh no, Stephen's found me, <laughs> but he's still got to catch me. I'll, I'll see you guys later. And don't forget that God has an awesome plan for you. And I sure hope that you put your trust in him. Bye. Okay, so go back on, please. Go back on. Okay, so whatever happens, remember God loves you and He has a plan for you. Okay, Pink, one take the younger ones. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay come on, Daniel. <laughs> Yeah, they don't need to talk about Okay, um, right, so we're talking about trust. We're talking about relying on God. Okay, so we've all had times in our lives where we've had to forget our own plans because they completely change, because God has a different plan for us. And we have to listen. So we can talk about relying on others and how we grow that trust and that love. Okay, next. So on this slide, on the first picture, that's my grandmother, my grandma, grandfather, my uncle and my mum. The second one is my mum and my grandfather, grandmother. And the third one is my mum, not that long before she died. I grew, these are the two most important people in my life. I grew to love and to trust these people so much. My grandmother prayed for me every single day of my life from the day I was born to come to know the Lord. And it was God's plan that on the 14th of April, 1985, it happened. And I owe these two ladies so much. They were such an inspiration. Yes, sometimes me and my mum would argue like cat and dog, because we were very much alike. But we could have some of the most spiritual and deep conversations as well. Because of what I learned from my mum, I hopefully have become a good father and is learning. And my children listen to me. So, top left, as you can see, is my eldest daughter, Jenny. Then my son, then my twins, and then my grandson. And there they are, all as adults. I made sure that they were independent. They can all cook, they can all use a washing machine, they can all iron, they can all look after themselves. Why? Because I wanted them to know, because I won't always be here. They will be on this earth longer than me, unless the Lord comes. And they are amazing adults. And I have, as you can see, an amazing grandson. But if I did not build that relationship as a father, and they, as the children, listen to me, they would not be where they are today. One of my twins went to Oxford University. Yeah, I never, she did. 
one of my twins and my eldest both went to university. Um, one went in Wales for a degree and a master's. Rachel went to York for a degree and master's and then went on to do a teaching degree at Oxford University. Why? Because they all became solid, good adults and were willing to listen. One thing I will say about my mum and what you should know about your mums, they are after God, in many ways, the most important person in your life. They looked after you, they fed you before you were born. You should respect and love your mothers so, so much. Because when my mother suddenly passed away, it really, really broke me. Because there was so much I wanted to say and couldn't because she went suddenly. Okay, one second. Okay, so don't go on to the next one yet. Because I had to listen to people, I had to be able to look after some of my special pets. Okay, so if you don't like creepy crawlies, you can look away. So go on to the next screen. Okay. So these are some of my pets that I used to keep. So the first one is from India. It's called an Indian ornamental. The second one, as you can tell by its color, is another Asian one, it's a cobalt blue. The one showing the fangs is the same one as in the last photo. And she would cover a dinner plate. She was that big from South America. And the other one is a Mexican red meat. Next one. Snacks. We're about to see some snacks. So I also used to keep lizards, leopard gecko, bottom one is a burger skink. Corn snacks I used to keep. I actually bred some corn snacks. Corn I ended snacks. up with 60 babies. 60 babies? 6-0. Wow. Liosha, Liosha. 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 Okay, and then a royal python down the bottom. 60 babies. 6 Python. Yeah, eggs. Oh, where's the babies? Go on, sold them. This is a long time ago. I don't have them now. Okay. But if I did not listen to other people about how to keep them, the spider may have bit me, and they are poisonous. Only like bees then. The snakes might bit me. And yes, I did make a mistake once to get bitten by a snake. But my royal python was about four and a half foot long. And in the summer, he would wrap himself around my arm, and I would walk down the street with him on my arm. And he loved it because of the sun. He was so, so chilled out. And he was the rescue snake. So if you want to do anything special, in life, you have to listen. If you don't listen, you will get hurt. So if you don't trust in God, in time, you will get hurt. Next one. Right, so go back one, go back one. That's it. Who can, who can tell me what this place is? Uh, London Opera House. Yeah. Hello, uh, Nicole. Sorry? The Philharmonic. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Just the next one, please. Okay. We that, went there when we were in London. That, anyone? That is the Royal Albert Hall in London. I went there twice. And at that time, I was still I was a new Christian. And I was... I actually made the mistake of asking God to prove himself to me. Go to the next, next one. And again, one more? Oh, yeah. Okay, right. These two fam very famous yes. people. Yes, I heard these two people there, one one year, one the other. Okay, Herman would know Benson, but we all sure have heard of Rainer Bonke. Yeah. And I saw some wonderful, wonderful miracles. God really proves himself to me, that then really spoke to me. I saw someone get up out of a wheelchair. 
I saw someone that was wearing a body brace to keep them straight, otherwise they would crumble. They took it off. I saw people getting up and so, so many different things happen. Which is why I've said, I've shared with Pastor Jing in the past, the only miracle I am yet to see that would top anything is someone being raised from the dead. I saw so, so many things happen. And trust me, these things are true. These things happened. So more than trust me, trust God and rely on him. Next screen. Okay. In the 80s, okay, this is one story where I had to rely on God. Oh, so my mum's fine. Can you go back one, please? That's it. I was in Cardiff and I was on my motorbike and I hadn't passed my test, so I could go on the motorway at that time. I had to go all the way up and all the way around to Chippenham, which is my hometown where I grew up. On my way, I had to get to Chippenham in a certain time because I was leading a teens and twenties meeting, um, a youth meeting basically. So I was on my motorbike, I had 105 miles to go, 170 kilometers. To go to the next one. Uh, Ross on Y, which was still 59 miles or 95 kilometers away, I'd run out of petrol and I had no money on me. So I thought, what can I do? It's dark, because it's winter. The petrol station is closed in the village. I have no money on me. What do I do? So I started walking. And I started hitchhiking from the lift. And I prayed, I said, Lord, I've got to get there. I've got to get there. Or out of nowhere, coming the other way, was a young person, young man on a motorbike, and stopped. He said, what's wrong? I explained. He said, come with me. So I pushed my motorbike with him, and we went to the local garage. He says, I know the owner. They filled up my petrol tank. Wow. For free. I said, Here's my number, give me your address, I will send you the money. I got to my bike, pulled away, I looked back, he was gone. He was gone. Was it an angel? I'll leave that for you to decide. But I never heard from that person again. But I got to my church, which is there. That's my first church, on time. Praise God. I had no other explanation but to have had to rely on God. And that's God's doing. Next one. Okay. Right, stop there, stop there. Yeah, bring the second one up. Yeah, this is my bank. That's not my bank card. This is another time where God answered prayer in a way without me asking. Early in December, I had my bank account hacked. I had my card cloned. I had all my money taken out of my bank. Okay, I had all my money taken out of my bank account. Go to the next bit, please. But, I gave my situation to God and I prayed. I had a need. I didn't need all the money because my rent and some bills had been paid. But I had, I'm not going to name anyone, but a few people come forward and help me. Someone also gave me some money for Christmas, which I've never had really before. So, my God shall supply all your need. All your needs, not your wants. You will supply all your needs. God supplied my need for Christmas. I have to wait probably till the end of February before I get some or all the money back. 
basically I've got to prove I wasn't where the comment was used. Okay, if I get it back, great. If I get some of it back, great. But God supplied my needs. So it's another instant where I had to rely on God. So an instance in your life, maybe not yet, but it will happen where you have to rely on God. And when that happens, think fog. Fully rely on God. And no one knows. Next thing. So, a couple of verses for you. Okay. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. If you believe in someone, you will trust them. If you believe in someone, you will rely on them. If you believe in someone, you know what they're doing is right for you, even if you don't like it. There have been times with my mum, she would say, John, I love you, but I don't like what you're doing. Well, let me tell you this. God loves all of you. Even though there may be times he doesn't like what you're doing. And the other one there is, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Greater is he that is in you and me than he that is in the world. Nothing is impossible for God. Next, next one, please. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. So when you're worried, like I was on those two occasions, and other occasions, trust me, I gave it to God. And if you give it to God, he will provide the answer. Okay, and those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. So if you look for God in your heart, it's not just words, it's here. It's the saying that says, actions speak louder than words. It's not always what you or I or Pastor Jim says, it's what we do, how we act. Are we acting Christ-like? Are we doing what Jesus would do? Think about it. Are we doing what Jesus would want us to do? Very important to think about that. Okay, next one. So, relying on God. This is what I would like you in a moment to talk about in your groups. Go to the next one. Okay, so, I want a discussion, because you're all a little bit older, don't want colour in that. We need to talk. We need, need to use our brains. We need to think and to feel. So, in your groups, can we rely on God? Have we ever had to rely on God when things seem impossible, like I have? And how can we build our relationship? with God. And then just before we go, I'm going to ask one or two of you to recite your wristband. Okay? Your, your memory first. So can we go into our groups, please? Are we, are we in our groups? Yes. Okay, so... Okay, so we'll have about ten, 10 minutes or so on this. Proper calm, grown-up conversation. Just think about it and think about what, what we have to say. Amen. Just one moment, please. One moment. I want to share a, a real testimony about my family. Uh, first, uh, in 2006, when we moved to Liverpool. Okay? So, you need to listen to how the story started. When Samuel was in my rooms and I got pregnant at the seven and a half months, nearly due. 
And then we only got 700 cash in our bank for our family move to Liverpool. God called us to start, set up a church in Liverpool and the shepherding the Chinese people and the shepherding the international students. So we moved and then I worked like that because I was so heavily pregnant. And then we got no money. So the cheapest house on the market was 375 for per month for the renting. And the, you need it for down payment. So give me math. I got a 700. If I need a down payment, 775 as a woman, how much I need it? Women's rent, women's down payment. How much I need it? How much do I need it? I need to pay one month's deposit, 700, uh, a 375 as a woman's deposit, and a woman's rent. How much money we needed in the beginning? 700. So the answer is, do I, can I find out any houses? No. no. So um, Grandma Joyce take us in, and then she said, before your baby was born, you need, when the baby was born, you need to move out of my house. I'm 80 years old. I do not want a baby crying day and night. I said, yes. But during that time, it was July. And then August, then September. And then November. And then in the end of September, and the one month before, and we found a house, and the, the housing association, and the, someone helped us to pay the down payment, and then we move in 350 pounds. The church people help us to decorate the house. And then we got the house, we move in, and then we gave, I gave birth on Samuel on 6 November. So that's why we started from my own family. And then before that, because I was so poor, our family is so poor, I was I, I, I love to eat duck. Yeah. Then I got no money to buy duck. No money to buy uh dumpling, you know, jiaozi. No. And then I cannot make jiaozi. So I I I one night I got a dream. I saw dumplings fry on my, on, in the sky. I then I just eat, I grab and eat, grab and eat. The next day I told Pastor Daniel, I said, Daniel, I dreamed that, that roast duck last night. He said, I will take you to the restaurant today. We order half of the duck and then you can eat the four. And I eat the four. I will tell you this laughing story. And then we look at it now. And then we look at my house. I look at my teddy, I look at um, my, my garden front in the back, and look at the, this building, I look at the church, I look at each of your family. Ask your parents, you all have the similar story, but we are different. We are group are different. We rely on God. I remember Ankhon's family, when they first started, their house was pulling, but they never gave up, the mom, she is a praying woman. She's a pray and a pray. The house transformed. They get decorated and everything. I remember Ishan's house. I remember uh, 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 Li Ai's house. I remember Mei Ling's family. I remember all those families. So all of us, all of our families had a, each have a story of rely on God by faith. So this is our secret. This is God's gift for us, for your family, for our family, and for John. So, and thank you so much.